Hi everyone. Your lab this week is cell structure and function. You have three activities in it. One of them involves diffusion, one of them involves osmosis, and one of them involves um, differentiating between prokaryotes, eukaryotes, and viruses. The first two activities fall under the blanket or the umbrella of homeostasis. And so let's talk about homeostasis and its relationship to cell structure and function so that you understand why you're doing this lab. Homeostasis comes from the Greek word for homeo, meaning similar, and stasis, that means standing still. Now you know that biology doesn't stand still. And maybe homeostasis isn't the right word for this because this is in cell biology meeting a dynamic equilibrium about find, a constantly finding balance. That can be balance in something like blood pressure, especially with blood sugar, body temperature. You also did a lab last week in enzyme catalysis, and that was maintaining a balance in energy activation levels. The enzyme brought down the activation level to maintain a balance in energy usage in your organism so that homeostasis can be on the macro level that is for an entire body, blood pressure, blood sugar, body temperature, and we can take it all the way down to the cellular level. That's what you're going to do today on the cellular level. So I just replaced my blackboard here. And I want to talk to you about the cellular level for homeostasis. When we talk about the one of the processes at the cellular level, one of those processes can be diffusion. And diffusion is the passive transport of molecules in solution. So there's your test tube there that has your water, which is your universal solvent, and it has some orange solute in it or molecules in it. So diffusion is the passive transport of molecules in solution. And most of the time, our solution is water or saline in biology. Now diffusion is an umbrella term for three processes. One is diffusion itself, and we'll explain what that is. One is osmosis, and one is facilitated transport. But all of these processes fall under the umbrella term of diffusion. And when we talk about these processes, diffusion itself is for the smallest molecules that we think about in solution. Osmosis is for larger molecules in solution. And facilitated transport is for some of either the largest molecules or charged molecules in solution. And the way that these all are associated is that all of these methods are essentially mixing with a fence. And that's how I like to think about it. I always think about visual ways to look at things. This is mixing solutions on both sides of a fence. You could think of the fence as like a chain link fence. So it has some openings to it. And we'll describe how this chain link fence this semi-permeable membrane, permeable means to move through, this is semi-permeable. It has some chain links on it. It doesn't let everything through. It lets some things, things through. And we'll describe how this varies between the smallest molecules and the largest charged molecules. Before we describe the differences between the three modalities of diffusion, let's talk about the commonalities first. And the things they have in common is that they all deal with a semi-permeable membrane between two different solutions with solute in them. So I put my little lines there for my solution, generally in water or saline, with molecules in it. And there are two different solutions bound by this semi-permeable fence or semi-permeable mem membrane often a cell membrane, even maybe a nuclear membrane, all right? So this is a model for us for the cell membrane that we'll find with our diffused processes. 
The second thing they all have in common is the rate of transport of the molecules through this membrane. And some of the factors that are associated with that rate of transport include the concentration of the solute on each side of the membrane. That is the gradient of the concentration, of the solute concentration. So we say this as solute concentration, that's the marking for it, on the gradient. If this is a very, very um, concentrated solute form of the solution, and this is a less concentrated solute form of the solution, and you have a very steep difference between these two concentrations, this rate is going to move from high concentration to low concentration faster. So that is what we talk about when we talk about the gradient there, the difference between the high, highly concentrated solution and the lower concentrated solution. Another factor in the rate of transport is the temperature of the solutions. If the temperature of the solutions is higher, then they have more kinetic energy and that solution is going to flow at a faster rate. A third issue for rate of transport is the area, the surface area of the semi-permeable membrane. The more surface area you have for these reactions and diffusions to take place on, then the faster those, um, that diffusion will occur. So that surface area of the cell membrane. And lastly, what they have in common for rate of transport is the size of the molecule that we're talking about. So that size of the molecule does impact the rate of transport. Smaller molecules are going to um, be um, diffusing at a much faster rate than larger molecules. When it comes to facilitated transport, we're talking about some of the largest molecules that will get across a cell membrane or a charged molecule. And in many cases, the facilitation for that is due to ions or to phospholipid membranes, which are selective in when and how they let larger molecules across the lipid barrier. So we have two commonalities in all of these diffusion processes. And the two commonalities are that each of these processes involves a semi-permeable membrane and two different solutions, one on each side. And the rate of transport between those solutions along the semi-permeable membrane is dependent on the concentration of the solute in each one of these solutions and the difference in the concentration, a very high difference between the higher concentrated solution and the lower concentrated solution means that you have a faster rate of transport. And the solution temperature, the higher the solution temperature is, the faster the kinetic energy will move that through the gradient. Also, the area of, um, of the semi-permeable membrane leaves more access for the solution to move. And the size of the molecules does impact the rate of, of uh, transport. Smaller molecules will diffuse faster. In your experiments, in your activity one and activity two, you're going to be working on two of these mo uh, two of these factors for rate of transport. In the first activity, you're going to be looking at the relative area of the um, semi-permeable membrane and you're going to be looking at the rate of reaction or the rate of diffusion that happens as a result of that. In other words, you are going to be replicating small cells with a model that is small potato cubes and you're going to be replicating large cells which is a model of large potato cubes. And what you're going to be comparing is the surface of the cell in the small cell and in the larger cell. And you're going to be comparing how much fencing you have around these small cubes and how much fencing you have around these bigger cubes 
in relationship to the volume that you're trying to diffuse across. So you'll make a hypothesis to yourself and say, well, how do I think this is going to happen faster for my diffusion rate? Is it going, is the diffusion rate going to happen faster in smaller cells or in smaller potato cubes or in larger cells and larger potato cubes? And you're going to be comparing your semi-permeable membrane, which is actually the outside of your potato cube, to the volume of the potato cube itself when you do that um, experiment. You're also going to be looking at rate of reaction in the second activity that deals with the solute concentration and the gradients of the solute concentration. So when we talk about that, we will look at two concentrations that are equal, one concentration that is higher than another, and one concentration that is lower than another. You'll have three trials of that. We'll go over that a little bit more. For now, I want you to look at the video that is Why Are Cells Small? And that will help you to understand what you're doing in the first activity to look at the area of the surface membrane and how what that impacts is, impacts rate of transport through a cell.